Welcome to Discover Barnstable, the official podcast of the Town of Barnstable, a podcast where you can meet the people who steward the programs and services for the Town of Barnstable that connects us to the, our quality of life. We invite you to join the conversation as we navigate municipal government and our community pathways to help you discover Barnstable. I'm Lynn Poyan, and today I am joined by my fellow tour guide and co-host, Liz Hartsgrove, as we dive into this week's topic of discussion of shellfishing with Marine Environmental Affairs shellfish biologist Liz Lewis and Senior Natural Resource Officer Amy Croteau. Amy was born and raised in Barnstable, graduating from Barnstable High School in 1999 with a focus on environmental issues. She has a bachelor's degree in marine biology from UMass Dartmouth, and she began her employment with the town as a seasonal, seasonal shellfish technician's assistant in 2006. She was hired full-time in 2009 as a natural resource officer and promoted to her current position of senior natural resource officer in 2019. Liz Lewis has been working for natural resources since 2012, first as a seasonal shellfish assistant and working her way up to shellfish biologist. From her efforts towards increasing quahog production from 800,000 pieces to 4 million with her team, Liz's positivity and passion for the town of Barnesville and shellfish can be seen and enjoyed all around. Welcome, Liz and Amy. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. This is exciting. Um, so, yeah, shellfish, it's yummy. It's world known. Barnstable's really world known for our oysters and uh, any type of shellfish, really. So, um, can you at least first dive into what your relationship is? Because one's, you know, natural resources and then one is shellfish. So, can um, Amy, why don't you talk to me about or talk to us about? how that relationship and how you and Liz work together. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to ask me about how much I love shellfish. Yeah, you <laughs> that too. Which is like not at all because well, I'm allergic to that. Oh, yes. you are. <laughs> me too, me yeah. too. But really? I love later that's in shame. life, yeah, later in life allergy, but yeah. That's a shame. But um, Yeah, so Liz, as our shellfish biologist, is in charge of our propagation program. Okay. Um, I, as the shellfish constable and senior natural resource officer, am more of the, we could say the business end of the stick, yeah. um, the enforcement end of things. Mm -hmm. So we uh, work together for purposes of moving propagation forward when they need extra hands, they'll use us. Um, and then they help us in the winter time when we need extra enforcement. Um, but we're with each other with the exception of during low tide and our obligations are, are different yeah. because I'm compliance and she's farming. Um, we work together quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. I see you a lot. We do. Yeah. I hope you like each other. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do. We're a big family at MEA. Whew, that's that's <laughs> relief. Um, so Liz, what is propagation? I'm hearing this word. So what is it? Propagation. Yeah. It's really, um, it's ocean farming. That's aquaculture. So propagation, the whole goal of propagation is growing the shellfish to supplement the wild fishery to take some of that fishing pressure off of off of the wild stuff that's out there so that we can enjoy this for years to come. Hmm. And what's, so you said off the wildlife, explain a little off bit. The, the, so the, yeah, the wild ahead. fisheries. Wild so fisheries, we have, okay, yeah. We have this natural, Mother Nature does yeah. a lot, okay? She's really in charge, and she'll put the cohogs, the soft shells, she'll put that stuff out there, but... If we had, like sometimes we have 400 people come to a landing opening weekend of oysters, right? Mm. There's not going to be anything left. Right. And so my job is to put as much out as I can so that we still, we can support it, we can manage it properly so we still have other animals out there to help with all the other things that Chillfish does. With the environment, you know, um, broodstock, we need the adults to mm. spawn for more babies, things like that. That's really cool. Yeah, when you think of it that way, right, to, like, supplement the wild population, I mean, that's, I just love it. I love putting it that way. <laughs> it makes a, a lot of sense. Yeah. As a coastal community, we're actually required to, under state law, have some sort of propagation program to help enhance our natural populations. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's written into the Mass General Laws. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. Awesome, right? That's why we have our constable here. Excellent. <laughs> so that, that'll be on the Jeopardy questions later on yes. for people to, okay, 
Good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and when you talk about that with people, you had 400 people out um, on the opening day of, uh, of a season. There's the recreational component, and then there's the commercial component. So can you talk about the basics of the recreational component and what are some of the frequently asked questions, like how to get a permit, things sure. of that nature? Um, yeah, so we sell about, I'd say it's up to 3,000 recreational shellfish permits now. Um, a lot of them come in during oyster season. Um, that's our big draw. But the first thing, yes, would be to get your get your permit, get your shellfish license. And that's all online now, which is awesome. I mean, you can still come in the office and say hi to us. And we'll print it out for you and put in a little red sleeve. Um, but that's that's the first step in the process is, is getting your license. And with that, you'll get the regulations and you'll get some quick tips. So, you know, there's a lot in there. There's only one section that applies to recreational. Um, but going through some of those basics is really important before you go out. We have maps of what's open and closed and all those things. And this time of year, especially in the, in the winter months, um, you'll usually see an officer at the landing. So you can always ask questions, send us emails, ask us what's up, where to go, things like that. Um, so those are the basics. And then to get a little more into it, we do have shellfish classes. Learn to shellfish classes. We usually have kids' classes, focus more on the kiddos. But then there were so many adults coming to these classes that we decided to, uh, to expand. And now we have 30 adults more trying to come to these classes. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to have quite a bit this summer. And we hope to continue that through to, to really get more people involved. I remember going with Sarah Beal to film a um, shellfish claiming, claiming for kids class, yeah. <laughs> and the adults really seemed to be having just as much fun as the kids, and I just remember there was this one little girl who was dressed in pink uh, waders from head to toe, and I mean, <laughs> she was just so styling, and she had her little pink knee pad that would get on the <laughs> yeah. ground. Oh um, it was just, it was priceless, but that's when you started, and uh, some of them were doing it with their grandparents, um, and so it's a multi-generational activity for the family, which is fantastic. It's awesome to see that all come together. I mean, you want to see a community come out. That's, that's when it happens, and that's what makes this so rewarding. And so unique to Cape Cod in general because people don't realize this. I've had friends from the Washington, D.C. area come in and come up to visit, and we're like, we'll take you shell fishing. And they're like, wait, what? Oh, like, yeah. It, you can really do that and I'm like yeah let's let's go and and they are just having the time of their life it's a whole different experience that really unless you live here or have experienced it once in a while you just don't know that whole feeling it's impressive yeah so. getting that permit gets you that experience and just know if one of your friends has a permit too you can bring everyone in their family everyone can go on that permit it's the same limit one limit um, but you can bring all your friends out, which is awesome. You can have a big party out on the flats. That's awesome. In this town, anyway. In, in this, this town. It's, yeah, we, we do in the state have what's called home rule over our shell fisheries. And so while we have state regulations um, that we have to uphold to protect our public health and to protect our shell fishery, we also have local authority. And so from town to town, you need a different shellfish permit, and the regulations can be vastly different. I mean, if for instance, in Mashpee, they let you shellfish recreationally seven days a week, whereas in the town of Barnstable, we let you shellfish on Sundays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and town-observed holidays. So uh, limits can be different. There are places in which you have to get permission and a separate permit if you want to have somebody come out with you. In this town, you're bound by your weekly harvest limit, and so, yeah, we do have people, especially in the summer, who will bring their families from, like, inland U.S., and they don't know what horseshoe crabs are. <laughs> and it's, it's, like, it's staggering, yeah. you know, to us because we've grown up in a coastal community Correct. and are very familiar with all of these things. And it seems so second nature, but it, it, it blows the mind of people who haven't had that opportunity before. And it's a lot of fun to see, you know, while you're on your beat, essentially. Yeah. Now, with permits, though, is it age limited? Like, well, when you get to a certain age, you have to have a permit? Or do children even, and under 18, do they still have to have a permit? So adults, yeah. 18 and older, have to have their own permit. Okay. So the way that it's broken down in this town is you have what's called a family permit, which is functional it's for the two principal 
adults of the household. If there are any other people in the household over the age of 18 that would like to shellfish, they can either accompany the two principal people that are listed on the permit, or they can get their own permit. Um, if they are under the age of 16, they have to be under the attendance of an adult. Oh, okay, yeah. that's good to know. And you guys were talking about locations, and because you know Barnstable is unique, where we have both Bayside and Oceanside. So, can you talk to us a little bit about the recreational locations and how do people find out more information about where they can? I mean, can anybody just go and rake? anywhere that they want or is there certain <laughs> restricted areas and that you because you can't populate and replenish all over the place and I try to I, I'm <laughs> sure you do <laughs> we're not allowed to everywhere okay. that's true. right okay yeah. but in any area where we can uh, we definitely try to propagate we have designated relay areas that are outlined on all of our town shellfish maps that are available online or at our office and they show physically outlined where those designated relay areas are. So those are places where we can take stock from one location and put it there. Okay. Um, and so we also have designated recreational only areas. There's one at Scudder Lane, there's one at Bridge Street, and there's one at um, what we call Handy Point down the end of Little River Road in Catuit. Mm -hmm. And there is a seasonal recreational only area currently at Bay Street during oyster season, but it's likely in future years that that will be phased out as we're shifting focus from planting heavily at Bay Street to, to other areas in three bays. And there's other areas, um, you know, we have a lot of seasonal closures due to water quality. So we're testing for water quality pretty frequently with division marine fisheries so before you go out um, it is important to look at the maps so at all the kiosks you'll see maps and red means don't go there blue means it's open for shell fishing um, and so those are all up online as well so just knowing where you are so you can see where you're going to make sure that that shellfish is is um, good to eat great um, is really important as well and then the permits are they on an annual basis or do they like how frequent or when do people go and apply for the shellfish permits for uh, for residential? So you can get a permit any any or day of the year. Yeah, recreationally, yeah. recreationally you can get a permit in this town any any day. Okay, um, you know at least when the office is open and can process your permit application. Um, and the year round permits are good from March first of any given year through March first of of the following year. And then we also offer a seasonal permit. Uh, that's good from June 1st to September 1st. Um, and that is functional for people who are only here for a short period of time in the summer, but want that opportunity to still be able to go out um, to shellfish. And a lot of those people will, will buy a permit after going to one of our Learn to Shellfish classes because they realize that we have a shellfishery that's worth, worth the 70 bucks for those few months. Um, we do have differences in prices. If you're over the age of 65 and a resident, the year-round permit is $30. If you're under the age of 65, it's 40. Um, if you're an out-of-towner and you want a year-round permit, it's $140. Um, and then if the seasonal permit is 70, and then if you want to, say, become a part of oyster season, you can upgrade it for another 70 to that non-resident permit. Um, and then in addition, as a result of the BRAVE Act being passed back in 2018, I believe it was, um, veterans of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts can go to any coastal community and provide proof that they are a veteran and get a resident permit in that town. That's a wonderful option. It is. Yeah. That is. But going back onto the, you said non-resident, so anybody like from, you know, anywhere from Midwest, other countries, if they're coming to visit and they are here, they, they can just buy a non-resident permit. And, yeah. And as long as they they meet the requirements that you're expecting them to follow, that they can go out and yeah. dig up. Yeah, everyone can join. We've had, we have this one family that would drive down from New Hampshire every couple of weeks to go shell fishing. And then they bought a house, they moved to Maine, and they still drive down to go shell fishing here. 
Well, it's I, awesome. I can't blame them because our shellfish, I know you two, <laughs> not so much. Amy, when you can't eat them, but I have to say they are worth the trip. That's for sure. So, Can um, I just ask you, during COVID, did you see an uptick in per, um, permit request? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, we just saw an uptick basically in like, in humans being outside it and was in every possible yeah. nook and cranny, you know, in, in this job. A lot of people may think that the only thing that we do is, is shellfish related, but we're involved with a number of other things sort of behind the scenes and in the woods and out of, you know, public immediate view. And we're seeing people in all of those spaces now, too, where we used to sort of have those, you know, moments of, of just being in the nature, but mm. no longer. Everyone's outside. Yeah, that's. But it's good for your health. It is. Get it out is. there. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> So let's switch now to commercial shellfishing and, okay. and aquaculture. Um, what is the process to get a commercial uh, shellfishing grant? Um, and <laughs> well, that's an Amy question. <laughs> you know, and, she's and, the boss, so give her those hard ones. Yeah, I mean, this, there's a lot involved, but she will help you through it. Right. Yeah. And the blue economies are so important to the, to the entire Cape. Um, and then there's been a lot the Cape Cod Chamber had established the blue economy. Um, I think that they call it a, a tier or something. Mm. Um, but we've been doing it for a really long time. And so, yeah, if you can talk about commercial. Yeah, so um, there is a difference between commercial harvesting and aquaculture. So we have a wild harvester fishery. That's our commercial fishery. It's a closed fishery at 47 people right now. Mm. And those are people who pay, um, you know, uh, upwards of $550 or 350 if they're a senior, a year to make money off of what they harvest from the land. And that's wild harvest. Um, we used to have no limit on the number of permits, and we were very quickly overfishing most of Barnstable Harbor. And so back in the 90s, they had put a moratorium on new licenses, and then they had this system that evolved that had for every three people that left, one could come into the fishery, but it was on like a first come, first serve basis, which resulted in people lining up hmm. outside of the office and starting fights with one another. And so um, from that, we became a closed fishery at 47. That was sort of the natural number of people who kept renewing over a certain period of time. And we have now the commercial lottery. So it's a want for every one person that comes out, one person can go in. And every year, annually, if you want to get into that commercial lottery to be a wild harvester, you have to fill out an application between January 1st and January 31st, pay the non-refundable $5 fee, and in addition, our 47 people existing in the fishery also have to fill out a renewal application and submit their $5 by the end of January. If they don't, they will lose their permit. And then on the very first day in February, we hold what we call the commercial shellfish permit lottery. And people who have applied to get a permit are drawn in a lottery. And then that list is put in chronological order. And should people come out of the fishery in that given year, we go down the line and people are offered a permit on that basis. It doesn't happen every year, um, but we have had probably, I'd say, at least 10 new people come into the fishery over the past decade or so. Um, aquaculture <laughs> we do have some aquaculture license holders who are also wild harvesters so sometimes you have people who will be engaged in both aspects of the blue economy um, then you have some people who are strictly wild harvesters commercial shellfish people and then you have strictly aquaculturists so to get into aquaculture in the town of barnstable we also have sort of a closed pseudo moratorium of sorts that dates back to the 90s where we had developed a lot of aquaculture zone within the town and town council at the time determined that they did not want to further expand where we have aquaculture because at the time it just wasn't such a, a tried and true and sure way to you know take that land out of public domain and allow it for private use um, obviously aquaculture has become a major success in the state of massachusetts and in like most of new england yeah. um, and so we have established wait lists for aquaculture so if you want to get into aquaculture 
we have people who have been on lists since the early 2000s. Um, you pay your $5 a year to stay on the list, similar to moorings. And then should a permit become available um, through death, forfeiture, non-compliance with regulations, um, then that permit would be offered to the wait list. And then at that time, that person has to prove to the satisfaction of us as a licensing authority that they are a bona fide domiciled resident of the town of Barnstable and have been for 12 months. They have to pay the $125 non-refundable application fee. And then we hold a public hearing um, with their intent for the spot that they would be acquiring the license. Um, and then after that, all of the information is submitted to Division Marine Fisheries, who then certifies the license and sends it back they get a propagation permit from the state that allows them to physically purchase seed and grow it on their farm. The town license merely gives them the opportunity. It's essentially a lease for those defined boundaries. The state propagation permit actually allows them to operate the farm having those animals present. Um, we also have options for transferring in this town. So if you've held an aquaculture license for a minimum of five years and have met our requirements for production for the first three in terms of um, investment in the site, purchase of gear, purchase of seed, et cetera, and then meet our minimum production requirements in year four and five, which is $4,000 per acre per year, um, then you're eligible to transfer to basically whoever you want to, uh, so long as they also fit the requirements of having been domiciled in the town for the past 12 months. So we see some, I would say for every four licenses that get transferred, one will end up getting reverted to the wait list. And we have wait lists that are dedicated to what we call the north side, which is our Barnesville Harbor Cape Cod Bay side, and the south side, which is uh, three bays. Wow. And that's really, they have to be residents, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot to digest. Yes, um, but it's daunting. It is, but <laughs> you clearly know your, your stuff. <laughs> I know that was, that was a lot. <laughs> but it sounds, it sounds like a lot, but there's, there's people to help. Obviously, Amy knows the ins and outs. So if someone wants to get into it or they want to get onto a wait list, you know, there's classes out there too that'll that'll give you the ropes for what you need to have your own farm and things like that. And then there's people in all these towns that are there to help you to, to either to make this happen, to get yourself on the wait list, or um, if you're looking to, to work on a farm, a lot of these people, they need help too. And that's a good way to get in the industry and mm. see if you like it yeah. and then see um, maybe, maybe they're getting old and retiring and they need someone to transfer it to, you know? Um, or maybe you'll be lucky enough to come off the wait list and you'll already know what's up. So lots of opportunities. That is. And so when my uncle down in Florida is texting me a photo of um, oysters that he has just purchased at a restaurant from Barnstable, mm -hmm. does it really mean that they actually, the provider or the restaurant bought them from Absolutely. somebody that's working yeah. these farms in Barnstable? What, what's crazy is that we're only just recently getting around to having local growers accessible locally at restaurants. They've been going to wholesale dealers if they're not licensed as a wholesale dealer themselves and selling across the U.S. to all kinds of places for, you know, eons. Yeah. We're, we're kind of like slow getting to that party in that like yes we have this right here why are we not going straight from the farm to our tables and I think that that's something that's been great to see shifting in the past like 15 or so years um, because yeah you legitimately I was in uh, Hilton Head back in October and I snapped a picture at a restaurant that we were at because they had Cape Cod oysters. I was like, oh, I know what those are. Yeah. We, oh, those are Wianos. Those are Cape Cod oysters. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now they're trading with the EU, possibly. Yes, yeah, that's... So, uh, I know, you like, might see them over the pond. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because really they're just, they're exquisitely tasty. So. It's been a couple <laughs> decades in the making because the EU has different standards than the states do um, in terms of what's acceptable for uh, live product and so those arguments have been ongoing mm. across the pond for for close to 20 years and we're finally getting to the point where it, it looks like it's a real thing that and it's very cool yeah so I have another question for you though what's the difference can you really tell 
the difference between a bay side oyster and a ocean side. Absolutely. Okay. Huge difference. What is the difference? Well, first of all, don't put hot sauce on it when you're first trying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell my husband that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, have the oyster first and enjoy it for what it is, and then you can dress it up. Okay. Um, but <laughs> there's a super huge difference between like a Barnstable Harbor and you know, let's say a Bay Street oyster. So Barnstable Harbor is very salty, a very clean finish. And the Bay Street is sweeter, milder. Y- you can taste, do them back to back. I will. Try I'm it gonna sometime. I'm going to have to. And I have a lot of people do that because when, you know, we we have different limits um, at Bay Street or Scudder sometimes, you know. Um, I encourage people to go, go get your other packet Bay, your half packet Bay Street so that you can really have a contest. Do If you gave me a blind taste test right now, I could tell you the difference. I'm sure you could. <laughs> That's a nice little um, sampler for a party right there. There you go. Yeah, blindfolded. Yeah, and I mean, you're going to taste the difference between towns as well. Yeah. Um, So I grew up in Duxbury, and I can taste the difference between their oysters and our oysters. Yeah, no, I do know that. I lived in Wellfleet for a number of years, and so that is near and dear to my heart Mm -hmm. because we did shellfish there a lot when we lived there and um and then coming to the mid cape it you can tell the difference so we do or sampling that way but i've never done from within at one town on the bay versus the ocean side so i'll have to give that a try yeah, definitely and Thank people you. they they know their usual spots you'll see these people come every week and it's like i like scudder oysters or i prefer the bay street oysters mm. you know so you can it's funny how people yeah, are that is so how can we, I know we talked about the website and um, where people can find out more information, but what are your hours of operation? Are you open tw- seven days a week or is it how frequent are the, web, you know, sometimes with municipal government or just in general, websites aren't always up to date. Are you like really oh, putting the most up to date information on the website? They yeah. are up to date. <laughs> yeah, we, I think, you know, especially uh, shellfish related because public health is involved, you have to be up to date because what you see on March 31st may not be the same on April 1st. And you, uh, we as municipal employees have to do our due diligence to ensure public safety. And so, yes, you know, anytime there's a change in a seasonal area, water quality issues, emergency closures, we have the ability to post it um, on the town of Barnstable website. We have the ability to reach out to people through our online tool mooring info. Um, So with one click, I can send an email to 3,200 recreational shellfishers say, we have a rainfall closure. The entire town is shut down. Um, We have the ability, we have one call set up to notify our aquaculturists and our commercial harvesters when anything changes. So um, yes, our information online is is typically up to date. Sometimes we get a little bit wonky on the notices, but in the past year, we've gotten much better at staying on top of it. So I can say with confidence that this team is on top of what we've got content-wise on the website. Um, and, you know, our office is open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.15. But, um, you know, we work based on low tide. Yeah. And so our schedule shifts. We might be in at 5 a.m. We might be gone at 8 p.m. Um, and I know the officers are really good about checking the phones and things, and there's usually someone most often on the weekends. Someone's yeah. there. The office know. isn't open, but we have staff on seven days a week because we're um, – you know, in some ways, emergency response for for a number of other things. So, great. Well, no, that's really good information to have. So, I think we're ready, Lynn. Yeah. Are we ready for our rapid we fire are ready for questions? Our rapid, rapid fire yeah. questions. I saw this in the beginning, and I was terrified. Oh yeah, no, we keep this no, is nothing secret. to be. Too, yeah. Do I know enough? Yes, you do. Oh, yeah, it's yes, about you. you so it's about yes. you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So, oh. <laughs> so I'm going to go first. <laughs> do I, I think you think I know myself. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm going to go first with Liz. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite time of day? Ooh, my favorite time of day. I'm a super morning person. Are you? I am. I, the earlier, the better. Really? So I like when the sun first comes up. I mean, that's the best. Any, any time of year. I hope it, the earlier, the better. But... Yeah, I like that sun right in my eyeballs. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yep. And that explains why you're so awake right now. Yeah. I know. I know. Uh, and um, Amy, what's your favorite hobby? <laughs> my favorite hobby? Yeah, like what do you want to do besides, what do you do like to do that like... Oh, I take rabbits home that I adopt from work. 
that people just put outside, and I like to pet them. So I've got five of them at home currently. <laughs> you yeah. serious? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I caught one. Are of you those honestly? Bunnies yeah, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, in the backyard. No, uh, yeah, inside. No, but yeah, don't just put rabbits when you don't want them anymore okay. outside. They don't belong there. She um, can't but take any more. If house, I do catch them. I bring them home usually. And what are so, their names? Uh, so we, <laughs> okay, so my oldest one was uh, in a dumpster initially oh. with her sister. And um, so we named her Pooh and Piglet. Fantastic. Piglet passed away in 2020, so now we just have Pooh. But I feel like, you know, you kind of have to give the background. Otherwise, you're like, why did you name your rabbit Pooh? Uh, <laughs> there was a reason. So she's, <laughs> she's almost seven. And then she has her friends, our Broken Holland Lop, Mr. Breakfast, and his girlfriend, who is a lion head, who is named Puffin. Um, she's a troublemaker. She's oh the youngest. God. And then we have uh, Black Velvet, who is a rather large black velveteen rabbit. Um, and then we, our most recent adoption actually came from my friend's house in Taunton. She'd been seeing this rabbit in her backyard for like a week and asked me if it was a wild one. And I said, no, <laughs> it's a domestic. You got to catch that thing. <laughs> and so, uh, so she it was living under her shed and she named it Bubbles. And so now we have Bubbles. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, that I, did, I did not know that about you. Oh See? yeah, <laughs> and that's that's, uh, awesome. that's my favorite hobby is farming bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good hobby. And those are fabulous names. I love those. Those Thank are you. great. It's so. really hard working next to the animal control cubicle because I have six yeah. cats now. Yeah. <laughs> you brought, yeah, that's she brought a dog home from work. That's where my dog years. came from. I brought a cat home from work. Yeah. yeah. We, everyone bring, it's hard not to. So yeah. When you're working with natural resources or environmental stuff, I have lots of family that are in the park service and they always rescued something. Your or heart's someone. in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. This was very educational. Um, it was fun, and I really hope that everybody gets an opportunity to take advantage of our natural um, just jewels in the in the ocean and the water. This is fabulous. I know I enjoy it, So, and I hope our listeners definitely enjoy it. So. And I have to say that there's so much more that hasn't been covered. We look forward to yeah. welcoming you back in the future. Oh, of course. Um, awesome. With samples, please. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll do the blind well, taste Ooh, test. that'll be a great one. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm all for it. Well, and I will make the um, shellfish cookies like your mother had made Excellent. one year so that Amy and I can partic okay. participate. We'll have our own shellfish. I will eat yeah, the cookies. Yes. yes. So you do your blindfold test and we'll do ours. Yes. So that's, that's a deal. That sounds awesome. So thank you again. And thank you, listeners. Um, join us next week when we invite Director of Public Works, Dan Santos, for part of our 101 series to discuss the inner and outer workings of public works, the scope of services provided through that department, the small and large scale projects that you see throughout the town. And we're gonna also talk about the largest project on the entire Cape, which Barnstable Public Works is currently overseeing. Thank you again, everyone. So thanks for spending time with us and listening to Discover Barnstable, the official podcast of the town of Barnstable. We hope you found a new understanding of how your municipal government works to protect, engage, and enact for you and our community. Be sure to drop us a line at podcast at town dot barnstable dot ma dot us and let us know what you'd like to learn next. Till next time, go discover Barnstable. <laughs>